painting two class. Um, we are going to create a mini um, oil painting today. And so what I would like you guys to do is go ahead and pick out two or three colors. It doesn't matter which ones. Um, think about ones that would be interesting when you mix them. Um, and if you're not really sure how they're gonna mix, I just did a little test over here. So I took my yellow, my blue, and mixed them. And I also took my yellow and my gray and mixed them. And then I did my gray and my blue here. So figure out if that is a color palette you want um, or figure out <laughs> based on the colors that you choose um, if you like the way they mix. If they don't, trade them out. Um, a good rule of thumb is just by limiting it to two or three. Um, that just gives you fewer colors to mix um, and it keeps your colors from turning to like a muddy tone if you were to mix all of them. A few tips real quick working with the aqua oils. Um, some of them are a little bit older and that's okay um, and the paint has started to separate out from the oil medium so a good way to just mix them up is just kind of gently squeeze the tube so that it mixes the paint. Also um, when you get the paint out you can take a palette knife and smooth the paint out maybe even add a little bit of water to it so you're kind of almost like treating it <laughs> as if it was watercolor um, but it's sort of like if acrylics and watercolor had a kid this would be it um, because it's water soluble just like watercolor um, and it does reactivate which is nice so um, but it can also stay wet longer um, it is a thicker paint so you can get some nice textures out of it kind of like you can with the acrylics so squish it around a little bit if you're having a hard time opening one of these um, a good trick is just to take a paper towel or a rag um, and use that and just kind of squeeze around it a little bit and then open it up. Sometimes you'll get these little dry areas around the paint or right here. Um, oftentimes I will just wipe those off with a paper towel so that next time when we go to open this one it won't be as difficult. And you sometimes have to line up the, the threads. Um, please do make sure that these get capped. It is not fun to grab one of these and have it squirt all over you. Um, and it is kind of sad if they were to dry out. So um, the things you're going to want to get for this project are a small piece of canvas. Those are on the cart by the door. There's some tape over there as well. Um, and please put the green paper down on your table area so that we keep them clean. <laughs> Oil paints are indeed oily. Um, and so they're just going to be a little bit trickier to, to keep clean, but you guys have done a great job with acrylics, so we're ready to, to level up our paints. You're going to want some water in a container. A paper towel. We can't use the red rags with this one um, just because our paint stays wet longer, um, so it's harder to wash out of the rags. So please grab a paper towel. Um, you'll want a palette knife, especially for mixing it or even painting with it. Um, and then grab like a favorite brush or two um, that I like to use. Um, and then, let's see, you've got your paints. Oh, most importantly, a magazine. Um, there's magazines on the cart as well by the door. The reason we use magazines is they are less likely to seep through all the way. You can still see like it's coming through a little bit. Um, but if we were to put the paint on this paper, and then if somebody else were to use this paper in the next class period after you, um, it would just be a mess for them. So please <laughs> mix your paints um, on the magazine um, and then when we pull up our painting, we can actually pull up our painting with the tape or we can take the tape off, personal preference when we get to that. So what I would like you guys to start doing um, after you've got all that stuff, so if you need to pause me, that's fine. Um, after you've got all that stuff, um, I'm actually going to just put water down on my canvas. And as we do this, we're going to sneak in a couple techniques. But I also want you to make your painting your own. Um, so you don't have to copy me exactly how it is. Um, but if you aren't feeling super creative today and you just want to kind of do the same thing, that's totally fine too. Um, it's getting to be glossy. We don't really have a puddle, so I'm kind of trying to drag the water so that uh, we got a nice even 
shiny coat. If you get any extra things in there, um, dust, hair, whatever, just kind of scrape it out. All right, so um, now this has a nice glossy sheen to it. So I'm going to start with my background color. You can pick whatever color out of your colors that you'd like. Um, this is a mini painting, so it's okay to use a small brush like this. I think I'm going to have my background color be blue. I'm going to start at the top with that, just because usually the top of the sky is darker than the bottom, but you're welcome to go wherever you want. And I just want to experiment right now. Um, since this is probably your first time using aqua oils, um, I'm just pulling a little bit of that paint into the water so that I have a more fluid response out of the paint. And it's just fun to, to watch it for a second, watch your paint flow, see what happens when you dilute it all the way. Um, but also, grab a healthy amount of paint, throw that down, um, and see what that looks like. Some people like this broken texture, almost looks like dry brushing. Some people like this smoother, thicker look. The one um, frustration that some people have with uh, the oil paints is that they take a little bit longer to dry. Um, of course, if you thin them out more substantially with water, they will dry faster. If you paint them really thick, um, it'll take a little bit longer to dry. So personal preference of what type of look you want and also um, preference of if you want to be able to work your paint longer or if you want it to dry faster. Most things dry pretty fast in Utah um, and that is kind of one of the benefit of having class every other day so it kind of gives you a little bit of extra dry time. So we're just adding to our background right now. I'm going to bring my sky down almost all the way. The reason for that is I know um, what colors I have and so with that we just need to bring it down um, about three-fourths of the way and you are welcome to orient your canvas vertically or horizontally. Sorry I didn't say that sooner. And as always if you start out and something's not going the right way and you want to start over again you're more than welcome to. So some things that I just want to point out here that are going on with the paint. Um, up here it's really nice and, and thick and, and we can really see that bright, brilliant um, blue color. This is the blue we're using. And then as we get down, uh, we can see that as it got watered down more, um, these little granulars start to happen. Um, and, and what that is is it's just the paint breaking down so much um, that you've got these little grains floating on top. So if you don't like that look, you can blend it all the way down um, or you can have some variation just to play around. I'm just going to add a little bit more water because I kind of like that, that psh look that the water creates. So those of you that lean um, more towards watercolor as far as like the thing you like to work with, uh, you might find yourself watering down your paints a lot more. Um, those of you who really like acrylic, you might find yourself uh, making it really thick. And so really, whichever one works for you. Um, next class we will use a medium um, called Medium W that'll let you thin your paints without getting this grainy look. So I kind of added a few clouds to mine. Um, you're welcome to do that if you'd like to too. Um, or you can, can do some else to your sky if you wanted to do a sunset, um, if you wanted to make it another color other than blue. That's totally fine. A lot of the techniques that you know for painting, um, as far as sunsets and sunrises and adding clouds, um, a lot of those techniques are going to be really similar as we use the aqua oils. So again, this is, <laughs> is kind of like an experiment day. Um, test out oils, um, see how they work for you, pay attention to what you're doing, and, and just kind of have fun with it. So, so we've got a sky down. Now what we're going to do is add something um, to our kind of our landscape area. You could create a building, um, you could create a tree, you could create just a grassy open plain, really whatever you want. Um, I think I'm going to use my 
mine's gray here. That's, that's this one. It's almost black, but not quite. I really like this one for mountains. And so we're just going to... Ooh, and that's going to run. So it's still wet. That's okay. We can work with it. Um, a lot of Bob Ross's paintings are actually painted on a wet canvas that's been primed with a white primer paint. Um, so not gesso, but something else that he uses. And I'm just playing around right now with thickness and trying to build that up. Um, the challenge is, excuse me, this is really wet right now. Um, and so it's making my paint bleed a lot. So what I can do is I can go in and just dab that with my paper towel, just like we would on a watercolor canvas or watercolor paper. And I'm just going to soak some of that up. And then we'll see if, if that helped over here. Yeah, now see how I have a really nice clean line. That line's not so clean. I'm just going to dab around those edges. Good reminders to be paying attention to what you're doing because things like that will happen and you'll forget. That's a little bit better. The thing I really like about this Pines Gray is it fades out to a really nice blue. Let's see if we can kind of work these two mountains together. I want this to be a little bit thicker than your sky so that it overlaps a little bit better um, so that you see this color on top of your sky color. I'm not a big fan of that line there. We're going to come back and fix that. So definitely have fun um, mixing your paints, layering them up, seeing what they do. watering them down do a subtractive process where I just cleaned off my brush and then I'm just going to soak some of this up so that it'll get lighter. We can have a nice nice highlight there. Again I'm subtracting paint, wiping it off, and then I'm going to add some paint. A lot of times when we're painting we only think about adding paint, um, but you can also take it away just like you can take the water away. If you get things like puddles on it, you can just soak it up. This area got a little too dark too. Another great thing about oil paints is you can really remove paint pretty quickly. Um, it's not going to be as clean as actual paper, but it makes blending a lot easier. So now I have all that paint removed and I can just go in, kind of do strokes back over it, and blend it out. Now we're going to go this way and blend that out a little bit. So as it dries, you can just keep an eye on it and figure out, oh, do I still need a, to push some paint around? And just push it in the direction you want. And of course, you can always add more paint on top. Most painters will add layers upon layers upon layers of paint to a, a painting to get it just right. So this is just our first coat. Um, you may find something in your sky that you want to go back and fix. So I'm going to Take a little bit of blue and add a tiny bit more there, trying not to get that mountain too wet in the process. Um, I'm a little bit happier with that now. We'll add a little bit more here. Ooh, that got a little bit too gray. I did not clean out my brush, so fix that. There we go. So the thing that I really like about aqua oils you can really rework the paint um, for a lot of reasons. So you're working on a canvas right now that's pre-gessoed. Um, these are just little canvas scraps. So the nice thing about taping them down is that um, you can clean up the edges and make them smoother. Sorry, the edges on these aren't really straight. Um, the other thing that's really nice about using aqua oils and being able to rework it is notice how you can, can rub that canvas with your brush. You can take paint off. 
you can add paint and um, it doesn't peel up on you like watercolor paper does. Um, and it doesn't dry out as quickly as acrylics. Um, acrylics can be frustrating because you'll get everything just right and then one spot will dry up on you. Um, whereas the aqua oils, for the most part, as long as you're working on it that day in class, um, you should be able to rework areas. And maybe even the next day, depending on how it's dried or if it's dried. So um, it's a lot more malleable than um, the other paints that we've worked with so far. So, um, it's kind of looking gloomy actually. <laughs> I didn't mean for it to be that way. Um, so lastly, we are going to add some, some spring grass to the front. And I'm going to just start with yellow. I already have blue on my brush. If um, you're having a hard time getting your brush clean and doing water just alone isn't cutting it, um, just go back to the sink and use a little bit of soap and water. When we clean our brushes today, we're going to want to use a lot of soap. Um, and you're just going to want to work that soap in between the bristles um, to clean it out. So these do clean off with water um, and soap, but you've got to get that soap up in there um, or else the brush will be sticky when we come back and that's no fun. We do have brush conditioner um, if we need to revive a brush, so it's okay but please do your best cleaning them out. Um, I kind of like this, this yellow, um, the fact that it's not a super bright green, it really feels like spring, um, and it kind of brings a little bit more happiness to the painting um, that wasn't there before. So I think I'm gonna keep that. I, I was originally thinking I was gonna mix the yellow and the blue, but um, now I feel like the yellow has a, a place here. Um, notice how I keep going back and grabbing more yellow after I do strokes over that blue. You can really see that blue um, mixing with the yellow and changing it. So once this painting dries, um, I'll have to come back and go over it again with some more yellow to keep it more vibrant. That area was a little bit darker blue than others. So just little things to pay attention to as you paint. Um, where your colors are, how they're mixing, how much water you have. They will feel sticky. As you use the aqua oils so again if you want to remove that sticky feel to it um, just add a little bit of water to it and it'll smooth it out so I would keep reworking this painting um, cleaning some of this up kind of smoothing it out and then of course I'd want it to dry so I could go back over with that yellow um, if you execute a painting today and you're just stuck waiting it waiting for it to dry why not grab another canvas and, and maybe even trade out your colors, get some new colors and try something else out. Um, it's really fun to have multiple canvases going on, especially with <laughs> um, the aqua oils, just because sometimes you're waiting for something to dry and um, instead of waiting, you can just keep painting um, and keep experimenting because that's, that's really the best way to learn is, is through trying it out and seeing what happens. and. Some days it'll go one way and other days it'll go another way. So hopefully you guys have fun trying out aqua oils, just something different. Again, um, when you're done with your paintings, please, lots of soap and water. Um, just kind of massage it in the brush um, so that it gets in between those bristles. Um, and then I always test my brush when I'm done with it, wipe it on the back of my hand. If I see some pigment like I'm seeing right now, because I obviously haven't cleaned my brush very well, um, please go back and keep washing it until you don't see any pigment coming out of it because that way you know it's really clean. Um, the paints you can actually put back where you found them so try to find their home with their friends. Um, so of course the yellows with the yellows, the darker blues with darker blues, pines gray goes with black and white. Um, your magazines that you used please just um, throw those away but uh, be nice to our custodians and so when you go to throw them away um, what you're actually going to do is fold in on it so that um, when somebody takes out the trash, nobody's getting paint all over themselves. And then the other thing is, of course, take your any paper towels you used and just dis discard those as well. If the edge of your water container has uh, some paint residue or a bunch of paint residue on it, um, please just wipe that edge because we use these for everything, watercolor, um, acrylics. So. Wipe the edge of your water container just to be nice again to the next person who's going to use it. And hopefully the next time you go to use it, um, it'll be there. And then our paintings, um, to put them on the drying rack, it's going to be easiest just to peel it up here. 
And again, I'm not done with mine, but um, let's pretend we ran out of time. And so just gonna kind of sneak under there. Notice how I'm just going around all the edges. And if it rips, it's okay. We got more green paper. Not a big deal. And my tape was wider than the, the tape in class. So you could um, leave it. Whoop, that one's not wanting to stay down. Um, you could leave the tape on it if you want to continue to rework it. And you could put it on the drying rack like this. Um, I would set it on top of one of your paintings so that you're not putting it on top of somebody else's. Or um, you could fold the tape edges under as long as you don't have a bunch of paint on there. Or um, if you don't like to be delicate like that and you just want to rip the tape off, you can add it to your stuff to throw away in the trash. And ooh, I kind of like the edges. It's sort of like a fun, weird, expressive tie-dye piece. So I actually really like how that, that aspect of it turned out. I wish there was something happening down here. Oh man, why did I put this away? Here, we're going to unfold this real quick. And I'm just going to take a little bit more of that, that yellow. And we're just going to bring that down. Um, that's one of the really fun things about art is you'll have surprises that happen every now and then. And, um, just keep an open mind as you work on your art. Don't try to have a set plan for it. Oftentimes when we have a set plan, we don't pay attention to the fun um, accidents that happen. Um, and sometimes those accidents end up being your artistic style or they just end up being a nice fun surprise for the day. So try not to let those fun surprises pass you by. It's kind of like taking a hike and staring at your cell phone. One, you would probably trip and fall. <laughs> um, the other thing is you wouldn't, you wouldn't really see what's going on around you. You'd probably miss a squirrel or a bird or, or something. So, or a nice sunset. So. Keep an open mind as you work on your art. Um, see what happens. See where it takes you. Um, again, play with it. Have fun with it. Try to learn from it. So um, see what happens. And on Wednesday, we will go over some more um, specific techniques in relation to aqua oils. But a lot of times, the best technique is just trying it out um, and seeing where it takes you. So hope you guys have fun with this. Um, thank you again for cleaning up well. And I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Okay, bye.